three, four man rush, whether we're playing three deep, whether we're inserting a safety in sky or buzz or however we're going to insert to build the box, all right, or if we're in some type of three deep fire zone, now we may play the techniques differently, but as far as how we play the outside corners and how we play the middle field safety is really all the same. All right, so as we kind of work through this here, I don't know if one of those web guys was around to help me out here as far as this stuff is concerned. But as we go through it, I'm going to hit through the drill work very, uh, very quickly. I'm not sure if there's somebody can help me here. All right, now, as, as we work through it, what, what we want to do, especially, and I've been a defensive coordinator for a long time, what I want to be able to do is we have a, a, a practice of the day. All right, so on, on, during the season for us, we're going to work first and ten, second down, short yardage, go on. And obviously, a lot depends on who you're playing. But, but I want to make sure in those days, in a typical offense, you're going to face there will be a two-back or a one-back team. You know, I want the drill work for the day to be what we're installing for that day. So I want to work at linebacker, a lot of hat and hands, playing blocks, you know, up front working on the double teams. In the secondary, we're going to play middle field. We're going to corner all of our, you know, all of our drill work for the installation of the day. And we talk about practicing with a purpose. So let's make sure when we do our drill work, let's just don't do the drill work because that's what we've been doing for 30 years. All right, let's do it to make sure that we're, for the installation of that day, we have in training camp, loose down days, we're third down, two minute, a lot of those second seven plus situations. We work those and we'll work more drops, pattern match, or whatever we're doing. But we're, we're installing, we're going, to, we're going to carry our drill work over for that day. Some of the base things we do as far as uh, middle field coverage, is we do what I call one line drills, which you'll understand when, I, when we start going through it on the film here. Two line, which are more reaction ball drills. We obviously work all of our press man drills are a press man team and generally what we want to be able to do here is uh, what we want to be able to do is, is be a two shell team on everything we do so on our, as far as our alignments because we don't see much of this anymore all right but we want to we want to show show the quarterback two high safeties all right that that's what we want to be in the game to an eight man front so how we're going to build our box, whether it's a six-man box and one-back set, all right, or it's an eight-man box and a two-back set there as far as the spacing is concerned. That's really what we want to end up being. All right, so as we start working through that, middle field safety drills for the middle field safety, and then what I term phase drills, uh, the hardest decision that has to be for a defensive back is when do I play the ball? When do I look back at the ball coach? So we work these things constantly because really this is the most important part of how we end up playing really as far as the decision-making process on the back end of when they play the ball, when do they go for the interception, when are they knocking the ball down, when are they going to secure it, as far as our hook and swat stuff we do as well. So as we work through here, but as we start working through our uh, our, our drill work, and I'm going to zip through this just, just, just to kind of show it as far as what we do and how we do it. So when we start our drill work, we're going to go one line or two line drills every day. All right, so we're, we, we work through this, and I'm going to zip through this pretty quickly. But we work one line drills. The big thing we're, we, we teach in terms of, from a fundamental standpoint, is, uh, is just being able to really work with, when we talk to them in terms of our secondary, the thing I want to be is I want them to be comfortable in their stance. We talk about nose over toe. All right, nose over their toe. If they work in this position, they're going to be right. We talk about working within the framework of our body. Because generally, anytime you get outside your framework, you've got to step inside yourself. I don't get real particular 
about stance as far as when we just start to work a back pedal drill. We talk about putting the weight on the ball of our front foot so as we roll back, we don't step forward to go back. We always want to be working in a back pedal position where we put the weight on the ball of our front foot. So as we start to pedal, we just, start, we just pedal straight from there and we push from there as opposed to having our weight balance. But I always am talking about nose over toe. I don't want to see their pad level or their helmet position change when we start a drill. But if we just start the original drill there, we're just pedaling down the line. They're going on their own. But I want to be able to coach the players as they're going through it as opposed to yelling set hike for everybody to go. So they just go on their own. One, one guy gets out. So we pedal down the line. Then we work a pedal weave. All right, a pedal weave for us is basically what I want to do is we're going to maintain leverage on a receiver. So as he releases off the line of scrimmage, I want to gain depth, but I want to keep my, my, my hips square. I don't want to hit turn turn my hips to stay in a pedal. All right, I still want to gain a pedal, but I want to maintain the leverage I have. If I'm outside the shoulder leverage, as if the receiver stems his route, I'm pedaling here. All right, I'm pedaling here. The other thing is a big coaching point for us is, you know, when you run forward, you use your arms. The same things when you back pedal. All right, your right arm is in direct relation to what happens with your left leg, your left arm to your right leg. So you want to be able to just keep that 90 degree. This is when you're working on sprints, you've got a hammer in your hand. You're trying to hammer a nail back into a wall. So it's no different when you run forward and you run backwards as far as your technique is concerned. We want to be at a 90 degree with our hands, loose hands, but as we pedal, we want to work just like we're working backwards. But here we work down the line in what we call one line. All right, then we work a pedal weave, which we want to reach back and we're full motion, just working again, just trying as much as we can to work as much technique as possible, coaching in this situation. All right, now we really want to work on trying to open our hips, turn and run. We work on the line. That's why we call it one line. So we start our pedal. Okay? We, want to, we want to soft out of our pedal. And when we open, we really, what I talk in terms of, throw it, give yourself a contusion in your rib cage or your elbow. We want to open and be violent with our arm. But we want to work on the line, all right? gain depth, work on the line, and then work to a back pedal. Flip the other way. Because, you know, it, you know, most guys get beat because they lose their cushion. All right, they don't know when to flip, and then when they do flip, they don't flip well. All right, so those are a couple of things, again, we're trying to emphasize in this drill work right here. All right, as we work through it, we're just working back. Again, you'll see some things on here as far as the movement of the arms. We want to stay fluid in our movement, staying on the line and working on loose fluid hips. If they're off the line, then they're wrong. So we work that drill coming back. You'll see that again. Now we drive to a 45 degree. This is a little bit more of a half drill. We'll start at too high shell. We may drive to a half of the field and work in what I call fishtail, which is square up to the quarterback. But we want to open our hips and then work to a, back to a squared up position. But this is just working on driving from depth in the half, all right, or driving from a too high shell to a middle field look. But working on really getting our hips open and driving through right there. All right, now, then we always end up on one line a form of a W drill. And I think this is important as far as our teaching progression is concerned in, in all of change of direction. Uh, we teach a T-step. So when we when we want to break, we want to turn our cleat to get as many cleats in the dirt as possible. And then we want to take our lead foot and we want to point our foot where we're going. All right? So it's plant and point and we want a T-step. We don't want to just leave the front of our cleats down in the dirt. That's when you slip a lot in my opinion. If you have a question, just stop me as we're going here. But when you when you when you just put the top of your cleats, and that's where a lot of times you'll slide. We want to plan and point again. Go back to the emphasis of working in our framework of our body. We don't want our feet to get outside our shoulders. We want to keep our feet up underneath. We got our nose over our toes. That's easy for the players to understand. But plant, and then we want to point so our hips are going where we're going. All right. So what happens a lot of times when you'll see guys plant. They'll plant and then they point here and they're running this direction. Now they've got to round them, round it off. They don't get as quickly as they need to get. They got to get their hips back open, and that's what we're trying to work through this W drill right here. We're just trying to plant, point. We want to turn our foot to get as many cleats in the ground as we can. can. There's some good and some bad examples as far as we work through it here. But we really want to get as many cleats in the dirt as possible. And the big thing to me is working in your framework. It's almost as you step your, your foot right back up underneath you and you're grabbing, you're grabbing cleats in the dirt. Again, I'm talking to the players there of 
about staying in the framework of your body. All right, T-step, plant, and then point your toe where you're running. That, that, that to me is, is a transition game for a secondary player is critical. He's got to understand those things. And again, we work it out here. And again, as we retrace our steps, our, feet, our, our arms are constantly moving. That'll get our feet moving quicker. Okay? Some good to it right there. All right, now, when we work in terms of two, two line drills, on a typical day, we'll work one line, get them loose. The next day, we may go out and say, all right, two line drills. Now, the drill workout got on this, I only got one guy out there, but generally there's two guys that are mirrored with the work, and these are ball drills. We're working true ball drills and finishing on drills, and what we've incorporated now in the one line is finishing every drill with the ball, a ball being called. That's the most important thing. We can talk about all the different things you want to talk about since you're in big plays. you got to get turnovers on defense. you got to, you got to, uh, you got to limit them on offense. you got to make explosive plays offensively to change the vertical field position and defensively you can't have let them have big plays. Look at the wins and losses. You look at the NFL every year of the teams that are winning games in the playoffs. They're winning on big plays and they don't turn the ball over. They're getting turnovers on defense and they limit them on, on, on defense. So those are the things that we really try to emphasize in every drill work. We've been good at times in turnovers, and it's nothing we don't do a turnover circuit or anything like that. We go through practice and we chart turnovers. Anytime a guy gets his hand on the ball, he's a ball. All right, and the guy for that day leads our, our group give them a t-shirt for the next day to try and reinforce the positive things. But as we work through two line, you'll see here, ball reaction, shuffle, pedal, t-step, back down, back heel. And we'll, we'll skip the ball for the low ball effect sometimes, the high ball effect at times. But here again, we're just breaking on the 45. So all of the base fundamentals we've already worked through as we pedal out, coming back on its own turn, coming back downhill. But we're trying to coach up this film to show the things speed turn, coming back downhill. Again, another situation when we're flipping our hips, we're talking about with our lead arm of giving ourselves a contusion in the ribs. That's going to get our hips around. We've got, we've got to lead with that, get our hips around, and then planting and point with our lead foot. Really trying to get our toes downhill, plant and point, coming back downhill. Again, now we work to a, to a 45, what I call a fishtail, which is square back up, high point to out and up drill. All right, so this is just working on different individual routes and going and playing the ball, which I think as much as you can do in your drill work and playing the ball, that's, again, secondary-wise, that's what's the difference. That's one of the critical factors we look at is ball skills. Can the guy catch the ball? Can the guy judge the ball? If you can't do that, you can't play in the secondary. Those are the two critical things you've got to be able to do, along with the physical little toughness you have to have the position and be able to tackle. Now, when we teach press, teach what I call a kick slide technique, which is a little bit unusual all right, for our players and how we play. All right? But generally it's this, the receiver's here. I'm going to talk about the wider leverage in a second. We're going we're to start this drill toe-to-toe, -to -toe, head up on the receiver. All right? And generally what we, what we want to do in all press is we want to get the receiver off the plane. And what I mean is three yards either way, I don't want him to be able to climb vertically. I think what happens in press, the worst thing that can happen is a guy gets vertical on top of you, right? Kids, the first thing they're going to do is widen their feet, right? Or they get nervous and they want to quick off and get out of there, and then a guy's on top of them early in the down. And that usually is not what we want. So as we work this drill here, we'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If a receiver's releasing here, what I want to be able to do is kick slide into the receiver. So if he releases here, the most natural thing to do is step with my outside foot. But really what we try to teach balanced stance is step with my inside foot and kick slide so I'm square in the down long. Okay? So let's go through it again. If the receiver is releasing to this side, I want to step with my opposite foot. If he's releasing here, I want to step with my opposite foot so I stay square longer in the down. I also go back to the base fundamental day one teaching for us is we're going to stay in our framework. A lot of times what happens is when a kid releases outside, he gets nervous, we open it up. So now we've opened Release lane on a receiver. All right. So again, we teach we want to step with the opposite foot. We want to kick slide into ourselves as far as the press release is concerned. Now, some kids have a hard time doing that. So in order to calm their feet down, and we're going to see a video here in a second, is what I'll let them do is I'll just let them take their inside foot and just put it up and down real quick. All right. And 
and that keeps them from trying to widen their feet so much. Worst thing kids do is they want to widen their face. The next thing they got to do is step inside themselves, and we're, step, we're, we're two steps behind in the down. All right, so, again, a, a replace step is what I call it. He just takes his foot and he just puts it up and down. That gets him from moving his feet. Because when we talk about press coverage, we talk about quiet feet. I don't want a lot of movement. We don't need to be moving a bunch. We just need to be able to mirror bump the receiver. We teach an offhand jam, and I'll go over some of the other techniques here in a second. But I want to step with this foot. What, what that does, that keeps my pad square in the down long. All right, and again, it goes back to the first thing we said. Three yards on this side, three yards on this side. If we can get the receiver running east and west, then we've got a chance to win in the down. Okay, to win in the down. But press is one on the line of scrimmage. Great plays are one down the field. But you're going to win in press coverage on the line of scrimmage. That's the critical part to me that, that you've got to win. We work this drill. We press. What I tell the players, first thing we're going to win with is our feet. Okay? you got to win with your feet. So we're going to start out with our hands behind our back. And we just got a guy moving. And we're just going to work mirror bump inside out, working kick slide on all releases. And then we'll work an open release, whether we're going to play high shoulder or low shoulder technique, which I'll go over here in a second. But you've got to collision with your feet. with your feet. All right, so as we work here, we're, 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 we're on top of the receiver, all right, nose over toes, balance stance. And what I, we're really trying to coach our players is that if the release is here, we're kick slide in. We want to stay square in the down. And we get three or four movements, and again, it gets to where those players get nervous and they want to get their hands on people. You collision with your feet. That, that's the most important thing. I'm talking all middle field man, you collision with your feet. This is a mirror bump drill we use. Just in and out. Step to the opposite foot. See, we're wrong down here. He led, and the first thing he's got to do is step back in within himself. All right? Then the, he struggles in and down to get his hips open on a wide release. The guys that have a hard time with releasing first press. So again, we work this drill. We're just mirror bumping what we've got there. Then we'll take it and incorporate our hands in the drill. All right? We'll take our hands and we'll incorporate our hands within the drill. Stay in square, stay in square, quiet feet. All right, now, as he releases, what I want to be able to do, our base technique is going to teach an off-hand jam. So if he releases here, I kick slide, I'm square, he's releasing up the field. I want to take my elbow tight to my body, and I want to have my thumb up, and I want to press to his inside breastplate. No different than teaching an offensive lineman choking at the defensive lineman pass rush. I want to, that's a power angle for us. Thumb up, and I want to go right to the breastplate. I want to disrupt timing in the route. All right? I want to disrupt. They call it bump and run. It isn't just run. All right? So we want to bump and disrupt timing in the route. We want to take his hand. It's also a catch hand. The guy tries to come back up underneath. Boom, I'm stuck my hand on him. He comes back. I'm back with my offhand jam. All right, but it all starts with our feet. Good feet work early in the down, and then we'll work our hand placement from there. No, we don't change anything. You know, we may back off a little bit, and a lot of times what we'll do in press against a receiver that releases well, all right, is we'll cheat back to six to eight inches. We'll, we'll get the, the bend on our divided leverage, and I'm going to hit here in a second. We'll get the weight on one of our feet, and we, and we will quick off a receiver, all right? A lot of guys that want to get on the line and give you a lot of shake, all right? So if we see a guy doing that, I'll say, let's work a quick off technique. It means we're going to quick off the receiver, and the guy's going to give us a lot of shake. Now he's got to get in his route. We work offhand from there. So everything we do is an offhand jam technique from there. Now we do do some quick jam. If we have a, a, a DV with some length, some long arms, we may let him quick jam. Only certain guys are allowed to do that. But uh, but if he's off the line, it does not change how we're playing. So a lot of times I like to have him off the line, especially against the guys that shake. And generally the guys off the line can't release first press. Smaller receivers, you can get your hand and bend them around. All right, but again, we're working here. We're good. We're good on this. Just working this technique as far as what we've got. And again, when we're working man-to-man, -man, when we're working 
uh, middle field coverage. This is, a, this is a base drill for us, working with our hands. All right, now, when we're teaching a middle field safety, all right, we're teaching a middle field safety. Now, we'll take to maintain leverage. We work a lot of the same drill work from the same look. When we're teaching a middle field safety, you know, I thought early, let's just say the ball's on the hash here, and we don't get this much anymore. But if we got a pro set here, okay, and we got two high safeties, let's say this safety is, is going to be the middle field safety. What I'll tell him to do is I want, I want to, on the snap of the ball, clear my cleats back, and I'm going to open at a 45-degree angle. All right, as I open to a 45, the first thing i got to do is the ball on or off the line with the quarterback. Basic principles we all understand and know. Ball off the line, I'm gaining. I want to read three-step through five-step. So if it's a three-step drop, I want to be able to plant, point my foot, and I'm coming downhill on slants. I'm running through, I'm running through the reception area of the receiver. All right, but as I exit out here, I want to be able to see the formation from the Z, to the X would be the midpoint of that formation. Because what I talk, what I talk in terms as we continue to work here in middle field coverage is the seam area is the area of two yards outside the hash in the hash area on both sides. That's the whole seam for us. So what I tell the safety is in the seam area, 18 yards from the ball, you you better be effective throws in that area. That's got to be your range. So if the ball's on the on the eight, uh, 30 yard line. At the 48-yard line, all right, he's got to be in the midpoint of the X and the Z. He's got to be squared up, and he's got to be effective throws in the seam area to overlap those throws. So whether we're playing three deep, we're playing man free, we got a fire zone three deep, it doesn't matter. That's where he's got to affect the throws, 18 yards uh, from the line of scrimmage and the middle of the field. So when we work this drill, this is a three-step drop drill, okay? All we're doing is working on reading the three-step. So your cleats run through the middle, plant and point. Plant and point. And this is where you see a lot of guys overlap. So, so, so as they run out, I want to get, I want to see the front shoulder indicator of the quarterback. So the quarterback comes off the line, he takes that front shoulder, I'm plant and point and coming downhill. All right, I just want to work on retracing my steps. If he's going from the side we came from, all right, if he's going to the other side, plant, point, we're downhill. Good exit angle. Again, we're rounding it off there. It's a good example of not pointing with his front foot coming downhill. So we work three-step drop all the way through. We work at both sides. So he rounds it off. He didn't plant his, uh, point his uh, front foot coming, uh, coming forward. Plant, point. Really working on the change of direction drills of this. Then we work from three-step. We work five-step. Where we get to the middle, we pedal, we break on the seam ball down the middle. Good example here, all right, of not getting his plant foot coming back down. All right. We start at 12, but it's in that 10 to 12 area. All right, we could be we could be either one. All right, but, but, but I, I normally say 12 just from the standpoint of being able to, uh, you know, get down in the box. All right, be able to spin, spin high, be a half field player, whatever we're going to play a quarters technique from it. You can play everything from there. Watch his front foot. See that he had his front foot coming back downhill there. All right. When he planted his foot, his front foot goes here. Well, now he's got to round the break off, which is going to mess him up in the reception area of the receiver. All right? So, again, just, just the basic fundamentals of one-line drill carries over now to our drill work. But we'll take the same drill work, and now I'll work five-step with the quarterback. So now he's going to work to the middle, and now he's going to square up and overlap the seam throw. So we got to go high point and play the football. Yeah, now, it, it, based on the college app, is hard, especially, all right? So if the ball's on this hash, especially if we're playing quarters, well, we may need, need to get this guy tighter down on the tight end. I still have him hanging around that hash and slide in late. Our whole deal is I want the 
quarterback to make a decision after the ball's in. I don't want him to walk up and us to stand the guy in the middle of the field. And a lot of teams do this and have success, so I'm not saying it's wrong. That's just our philosophical, what I believe. When he comes up under the center, he goes, all right, I got middle field coverage. I'm going to the X right now. I want him to ball the snap and him to have to make a decision. We have to have to process that information there. All right, or we may show him middle field, pop here, dive a corner and trap to a side. But I want, in our base looks, I want him to see two safeties that are high. Because the first thing they're going to teach him is look at the safeties. And we'll see what the safeties are getting. All right, and we try to tie our looks from there. And, but I always tell our players, don't let these guys put you out of position to make a play. I mean, well, you got to do your responsibility first. So let's don't be screwing around trying to give a disguise and you don't get what you need to get. Okay? But th that's the other thing. All right, this is phase drill. Okay? Or I'll bar you. Now, I think that this is always a, the, the age-old question of when, when do you play the ball, okay? So what we said is this. Carl's a receiver here, and I, I'm the defensive. Is if, I, if I'm running with this receiver down the field, if I can get his help, then I am in phase with the receiver. All right? That means I should play the ball. The ball's inside here, okay? So if I'm running, you know, the coaching points for us is if you feel like you can hit his hip, all right, and you're in phase, we want you to lean, all right, Lean into the receiver so you don't create separation as you start to play the ball. All right? As you start to play the ball. Lean into the receiver because the hardest ball to play is the underthrown deep ball. So as you read back and he underthrows it and you're running past him, that's the hardest one to play. So as I lean into the receiver here and I press into him, as long as I'm looking back, it's not fast interference regardless of what it offers. If I'm playing the ball, there can be contact. All right, that's what it says in the rule. All right, now, as I'm here, I, this is what I would call an out-of-phase position. I'm, I can't touch him. Now I've got to play through eyes and hands. So as his eyes go up, his hands go up, I generally tell our kids a thousand one, we want to secure and take the nearest elbow right in the right in the middle right there to break his elbow down. So if I see eyes, hands, a thousand one, I'm going to rake it down. It's a 15-yard penalty. It's not a spot count on there. But I'll take 15 over a deep ball being caught. So when we teach this, start from the beginning. I'm an in-phase player. I'm starting to read, read to play the ball. I want to lean so he doesn't create separation. I'm out of phase. I'm working from this position. The worst thing I can do is panic with my back to the ball. Don't panic. You're, you're not beat until they catch you. So I want to read eyes, hands, fouls in one, and I'm raking coming down. All right, now, as I work through this drill, and we do this, we play bump and run. So this is something we do every single day, all right? A couple things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about inside and outside releases here in a second. But as I'm playing here, all right, as we start this drill, let me do it this way. As we start this drill, I'm here, the ball's inside. And I'll say, let's work from an in-phase position. So I'll just say, set height, and they take off running. Well, the receiver may work out of phase, and then he's got to play from out of phase. He may be in phase to hold down, press the body, and play the ball. All right? Then we'll start the drill, and we'll say, listen, I want you to work from an out of phase position. So he may work two to three yards behind the receiver. So they're both facing this way, and I just say, hi, they take off running. But they're simulating the drill of how they're going to play the receiver, and when they get into that situation, you know, a big thing to me is when a guy gets on top of you, that's going to happen. Have poise with your back to the ball. Have poise with your back to the ball. The other thing we're going to talk about our players is the move area. Okay? So, as we work phase drill, we say we start in a press look. And the outside release, generally in all middle field coverages, on an outside re release, we want, we want to stay high shoulder technique. All right? Because we work further enough away from the middle field safety, he's not going to help us. Okay? So when I talk in terms of high shoulder, all right, I want, to, I want to stay at a high position and inside the receiver. And as I'm reading through him, I really want to see his back shoulder. All right? I want to see his back shoulder. If we get these teams to throw the back shoulder fake ball, that shoulder's got to fall out in order to catch that ball. All right? He's got to fall out of there. But I'm going to give our guys a move area. What is the move area? That's where their comeback stop. So if it's at 16 yards, all right, which is most offense, some 18, all right, I'm, I'm reading the opposite shoulder, all right? As, as that move area, as we start gaining to 16, I'm going in that headgear. 
I've got to have a time clock go off in my head. All right, so when I talk in terms of move area to our players, those are the things I'm thinking of. High shoulder, we start moving past 16, I want to get my eyes in his eyes. All right, because I'm past where they're going to back shoulder or he's going to run an out route or a comeback. He's staying. This, this now is declared vertical route down the field. They're trying to do shoot the bomb and down the field. All right, any questions on that? So we work phase drill. As you see again here, they're just turned this way. Okay? They're turned this way. We're just saying, sit hike, and they take off running. And as he's working in there and he feels that, you see him trying to lean in. Now, in that situation, when I tell the players this, the only, if you're in phase and you play the ball and you lean in, the only ball that can hit you is the perfect front ball. This doesn't happen a lot. If it does, it hits. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's part of it. All right? But that's the only ball that hits you. As long as you'll lean in and create no separation. That's the biggest issue. You get kids that want to look, and they start creating that separation with the receiver. Now he's got more room to negotiate on the football right there. All right? So, again, I think the key point is really pressing your body into the guy. So we work here. his body become the receiver, high point the ball. That's what we want out of the drill right there. These, these two guys. All right, put some other guys work. All right, yep. Well, when he gets through that move area, so when he, that's why it's important as we work up past 16, his time clock's going off, he's, he's looking up, and he's feeling that receiver playing the ball. But my whole deal is when he starts to play the ball, he's got to press his body of the underthrown deep ball. Because there's a lot of offensive guys that'll teach and we're going to underthrow the deep ball. So if a guy's down the field and he loses it and he's sitting there running and this guy's catching the underthrown deep ball here. It's the toughest ball to play. And we'll take this drill and we'll do underthrown deep ball. We'll tell him. And we'll go out and do that. And, you know, we'll high point the ball. we got to finish the play there. But you see, you get the idea of what we're trying to work right here. Boys with your back to the ball, time clock issues. All right, now he works to where he got back in phase. Well, let's go read and play the ball. All right, and this to me is, you know, the way we play, you've got to do this to understand when, when you can and can't play. He's in phase, become the receiver, press the receiver, play the ball. All right, now we work out of phase for him. So out of phase, I'm going to start the DB further back. So now he's in total chase mode. See, he works up in phase. He ought to have gone ahead and played the football. Go make an interception. All right? So now you're getting in situations where they need, they've got to understand they can't panic with their back to the football here. You see the receiver there screwed this all up. He should be All right? But, but we're working right here. He's out of phase. He's out of phase. There you go. Catch up. Work back in phase. And if the receiver will give us a look as far as playing the ball, then we've got what we want. See, he, should work, he works himself back in phase, play the ball. All right, good. Working back, he's out of phase, he's out of phase, he's out of phase. Eyes, hand, there you go. That's a good look. Eyes, hands, break, get something down. Secure the receiver, hook and swat on the ball, swatting with the wrong hand. He's out of phase. Now he's in big time catch up mode here. We got to catch up, we got to work. Go. He works himself back in phase and gets ready to play the ball. So those, those are things to me that if you're going to play a lot of middle field coverage and you're going to play press coverage, you're going to find yourself in these situations. He's working out of phase. Eyes and hands, play the ball. All right, now, because I don't think that's one of the things I heard somebody ask Paul, what do you look in terms of, a, of an offensive lineman coming out of high school? One of the things that we deal with is when to play the ball, when not to play the ball, all right? Because that snap decision is either going to cost you a touchdown or, or knocking the ball down on third down. So what we always teach our guys is this. Well, number one thing we're going to do is secure the carrier, all right, and knock the ball down. And we just teach a hook and a swat. All right, now, if you're in position to play the ball and intercept the ball, we want you to intercept the ball. We want you to play the football. That's the most important thing is getting the turnovers. But to understand – me, you got to put kids in situations where they understand it. So we take some ball drills and we'll just say, we're going to work on hook today. So this is a receiver coming back down off a route. DB's coming. He's ready to hook, swat, get the ball. So what I'm saying is, if that receiver is outside the device,
fighter, we're going to have an inside leverage alignment on okay? So all I'm talking about, if this, if this platform here is the head-up, if this is the head-up alignment, I'm talking about the shade inside. I'm talking about my outside eye to his inside eye if I'm an inside leverage, uh, based on the divider. So if he's inside the divider, I'm an outside, because now I'm closer to the middle field safety. Okay? All right, now, on the other side, this receiver is outside the divider. I now take an inside leverage alignment. Okay? The ball moves to the hash. The divider on this side goes to the bottom of the numbers. All right, so it moves three yards. Anything outside of that, we're inside. Then it goes from halfway between the hash and the top of the numbers. So that's generally a six-yard area from the hash. If he's inside of that, we're outside. Okay, we're outside. And again, I'm just talking about the outside receivers on the formation. Same thing, ball moves to this side, bottom of the numbers, halfway between the hash and the top of the numbers. So if we're lined up on a receiver on a formation here, I don't care whether we're playing man or zone, it doesn't matter. We're going to line up just like this. This is what we call the seam area. Two yards outside the hash all the way across. does not matter about ball position. All right? So a halfway between on this guy. So if he split here, we're going to have an inside leverage alignment. If he split inside the numbers, we're going to have an outside leverage alignment. We're just talking about the two outside corners. Those are the two guys we're concerned with right here. All right? Any questions there? So that will tell them their alignment. All right, now, when we're talking in terms of covering a receiver, an inside slot receiver, now we're talking about seam left or slot formation, the nickel or the safety alignment on inside receiver. Now we're talking about seam rules. Now, generally, as a base way, we play off in the seam. But if we're pressing, it doesn't matter. So I'll just pull these hash marks down here further. So if this formation's lined up here and this receiver's inside the seam, doesn't matter who that guy is, I'm going to be outside leverage because I'm, I'm counting on the fact I've got middle field help. And the way we want to play in the seam, we want to play low hip, low shoulder, outside. All right? Generally, we want to be five to seven yards off the slot receiver. But we want to get to seven when the ball is snapped. All right? well, I feel like in man coverage, especially when you're five yards from a receiver, you can get on top of you awfully quick in the down. And if you, don't, you don't have anything in terms of disrupting timing. Now, his split moves outside the seam. I now go from an inside leverage alignment because I've moved further away from the middle field safety. Generally, the route combinations you're going to get are inside routes. And now we've cheated ourselves inside. Now, guys that I've worked with, offensive coaches, all right, they know we play the seam this way, so we have to change when we play them some. They'll over split the seam, all right. I mean, they'll tighten the seam splits. We play outside leverage, they run slants. We understand that, too, so we've got to change ourselves a little bit. But this is a base teaching role to teach the concepts of middle field coverage and where the middle field safety is going to end up helping. All right? Now, as we talk in terms of man techniques, okay, man techniques, all right, we talk about the outside corner and press, the divider rule. We've talked about the alignment. We've talked a little bit in terms of kick slide and then working our offhand jam. So if the receiver releases here, my off hand, I'm jamming with my off hand. All right? Quick, uh, we, we do do a little bit on this film. You're going to see a little bit of a show hand. A guy may cheat off, and on the snap of the ball, he'll take a quick inside jab with his inside foot, and he'll just show something to the receiver and get it back out. A lot of receivers, especially bigger guys, they don't they, we like to quick jam a little bit. Get our hands on them. Show it and get it out of there. They're not quick enough to get on top of you early in the down. All right, we work a quick off. Like I talked about earlier, we're going to cheat off the receiver a little bit. We're going to put the weight, the, the weight of the ball on my inside foot, and we're just going to quick ourselves off and then work an offhand jam from there. Because I really feel like playing bump and runs a lot like pitching. All right, you've got your fastball, and that's what you're going to do, or whatever your ba base pitch is. But you have to have some change-ups from there, and that's how I approach it with the players. You're pitching a game here. If you keep throwing fastballs, eventually they're going to get on top of it got to throw enough change-ups, but we give them a game plan going into the game. Now, if we're going to play a team that's got a big guy that has a hard time getting off press, we will allow certain guys to quick jam, all right, the bigger receivers. All right, as a base rule, what we're going to say is this. If the ball is here, and again, 
I'm talking about outside leverage guys. All right? Regardless of the divine leverage, on an outside release, we want to stay high shoulder. All right? We want to be a high shoulder position. All right? We want to read the lane of the route. All right? And we want to read through his outside hip to his outside shoulder. All right? And then we also talk about the move area, which I covered already. All right? It's 16 to 18 yards. That's when there's no more break-offs. It's a takeoff route. Now I'll work my vision up to his vision. That's what I want to see. Okay? So, that, so again, I think the move area is very important for a kid to understand, and it's a time clock. That's why you work a lot of releases. We do releases every day versus our wideouts, every single day. We do one-on-one -on -one every single day. It's actually really good to be one-on-one -on -one if you do it every day. All right? So that's something that's really important to play the way we play. But we, but we use this every day. So if he's releasing here, I'm reading through his outside hip to his outside shoulder, thinking back shoulder, thinking of breaking the route off. All right? If he takes an inside release, regardless of the split, I'll low shoulder position. I'm outside hip, all right, of the receiver, all right, and I want to be reading his outside hip, all right? And now I talk about reading the lean of the receiver. So if the receiver's going to break his right off inside, he's going to lean to his outside leg. So we try to really work hard as we, as, as we work on matching the routes. If he's leaning hard, I can start to overplay the inside portion of the route. All right? If he's leaning hard inside, I know right now I'm starting to climb for outside shoulder leverage on him because he's, he's bringing the route back to me. And we don't see a lot of double sticks and things like that, but... We, on all the inside releases, all right, as he releases here, he starts leaning hard here, I think he's going there. He's leaning hard there, I think he's going there. So we want to try and, and, and overplay the route based on the lean of the receiver. All right, and if we're reading that hip right, we don't want our eyes in his head here because he can shake it. But if I read that hip right, all right, I can slide the routes underneath. I can feel the outside start climbing on top of the route, all right, for that seven cut. Okay, but when we when we get an inside release, you don't get many vertical routes from an inside release. The only outside route release you get from an inside press is a seven cut. Okay, generally you don't get an inside stem to a vertical route. Very seldom. So I, what I always try to do is say, listen, when you get an inside release, the only outside route you got coming back is a seven cut. Some teams will run an out route from an inside stem on press. We don't see that much. All relative based on where the position, and the seam never changed based on where the ball is. It's always the same, all right, because the middle field safety is going to need to understand that. All right, if we press the guy, we use the same techniques and we use the same rules with, with, the, uh, with the seam there. But if he's in the seam, I want to be low on him, all right? I want to be low shoulder. If he's here, I want to be here reading his outside hip. Just like a, 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 a corner would do on an inside release. If he's further away from the seam, he's out of the seam, I'm away. I want to stay in a high shoulder technique. Same thing to me. You read the opposite hip and opposite shoulder. He's going to tell you everything he's got in the route. All right? And we've talked about the man drills as far as phase and in, in, uh, in, uh, out of phase drill and in the middle field safety as far as divide the formation, reading through the three step, five step, squaring up and breaking on the ball. All right? So, so let's watch this tape real quick and we switch back. This will be some, some examples on here as far as how, how we end up playing. Just stop me if you have a question. All right, now, so we're lined up. We, we show a two shell. We're spinning the safety up top based on call. The corner's lined up on the divider, okay? So, so right here, all right, this ball is on, the, on this side of the middle of the field. This is an oversplit divider. He's inside leverage, all right? This is close down here, and we will change divider. So if we work through this here, they motion down. Now let's talk about motion and man coverage, okay? Well, we always tell our guys is this. We always bump motion in. We never bump motion out, okay? So on this formation right there, all right, this old guy's motioning down here. We may have started inside leverage, but I want to do what I call back hip all inside motion. Back hip all inside motion. So if he's motioning down, I'm staying on his back hip. He's dangerous motion where he's in the seam now. 
So I want to play a low shoulder technique on him. Okay? As he motions in, I want to back hip the motion. I'm keying his hip. If he runs a drag route and I'm a man coverage, I want to do what I call tailpipe. Playing basketball off man to man. They want to get you on a different plane so they can pick you on the mesh concepts and different things. So use the umpire. All right? So what I want to do is I want to get right and I want to tailpipe him across the formation. It's hard to hit a moving target with a guy tailing. That's right, a hard deal to do. But I don't want to get on a different level in man coverage. I want to tailpipe and get right behind him. And then I can run through to work either in or out of phase based on what we've got. All right, now, they're in a two-man stack. We'll say they motion here, okay? We want to, generally, our base rule is we want to have the corner take the on-the-line guy. So if I'm, I wear, they're in a flipped alignment, we ought to alert the motion to start out here. They motion now. I'm going to hit my ass. and I, That means I'm stabbing and I'm taking the guy on the line of scrimmage. And the defensive back is taking the off-the-line guy. All right? So if we stab and we take this, we get this concept, he's got one behind two. Okay? So on any stack concepts. Now, when we have motion out, coming across the formation from the back foot, it doesn't matter. Whoever's got this guy is back hipping him across, and then he's staying still from a back hip standpoint. But we don't like the bump motion out. Generally, when you do that, you lose leverage from inside out. And we always want to squeeze the middle field to force the ball to be thrown outside. All right, so basic rule in man coverage for us, we don't bump motion out. We always bump motion in, okay? Bump motion in. All right, so, so right here, number one, poor eye control down here at the bottom. All right, with this corner right here. All right, not bad positioning here, but, but just right there, stay, stay pushing him across the formation. You know, his, his, his body position is not bad, but we need to be more on top of the receiver here. Does that make sense? We need to be more on top of him. But again, we've got an eye control issue because we're looking in the back here. And all you're going to do is watch him. Balls. All right, nice job up top from just the standpoint of kick sliding in, the guy gets on top of us, but at least, you know, the numbers are two yards. So right there, what I would tell the corner up top is, you forced him a yard outside the numbers, you've got him at least three yards off the plane, and we're in a situation to work to an in-phase position to play the guy. All right? And we're playing, this is a, we're in a rat coverage here. All right? But what I also tell the middle field safety is this. Is if, is if the down safety comes down, go ahead and get in the middle now. He screwed the whole thing up. All right? So if he already, if he squirms and gets down, there ain't no more disguise. Go ahead and get in the middle of the field now. He's already there. All right? So, so, so we go ahead and go there. We're, we're there. So, again, I mean, it doesn't matter. We, we've got a, a three-on-two funnel on the two backs here. Rat ends up making the play right there. But that's what I'm talking in terms of. We also talk in terms of our middle field safety when he's on the back side of the X. Any loaded formation, four strong load, trips. All right? Let's really lean on the X back side because that's such a big read for quarterbacks to shoot the ball versus all middle field coverage to the back side. So really when I talk in terms of clear our fleets, stay square and hold the X long. We don't want to undress the X running in the middle of the field, especially when they condense the formation. You know, right now, the middle field safety can play middle field from where he is based on this guy's alignment and this guy. Because that's the only guys that can threaten the middle of the field. I mean, this guy ain't threatening the middle of the field. He's an out route. All right? So then we work here. See, again, to me, we're too high here. We ought to be in this position. All right? Outside release, we stay high shoulder. This, to me, is a really nice job down here at the bottom as far as staying high shoulder on him. Again, we shoot a nice two-shell look for the quarterback. Make him make a decision after the ball turns over. Best pass defense in America is pass All right, so if we, if we look here. All right, again, just, just in terms of press coverage. We 
we're talking terms of the seam, seven yards from the man, we're a little deep, bumped outside, all right? Halfway between, so he's got inside leverage based on the split. And this is on the divider leverage, that's on the seam leverage with the seam player, all right? As we work here, now we declared that we're in middle field, we've got the run box, he's checking obviously to a pass here. So as we work here, we're a little bit high, but it's a good job of holding space on the seam. What a lot of receivers want to do is they want to wipe you off your leverage, okay? So, so if we're working in the seam, the seam never changes. As good a job as you could is to try to widen you onto your leverage. You still maintain seam leverage. So the seam never changes. If he stems you hard, we now can work from an inside leverage position. Same thing, same as this. If it's right there and we start inside, if he stems hard, stems hard we end up working outside. So his stem can change your leverage. But what you don't want to do is continue to work outside leverage, and then you create more space between you and the middle field safety. Does that make sense? So your, your leverage can change based on his release. I'm worried about the seam more than I am his release. And that's not a bad job here, squeezing the route off. It's a, it's a high shoulder throw. It's hard to get the ball in. Squeezes the route off, and again, with that release, seven cuts the only route you're going to get. All right, again, we're going to work seam leverage here, vital leverage outside. We'll see how we gained our eight-man box. See, to me, this, this is pretty decent right here. All right, of scooching the slot. Good job here. See, now you can play all those routes. Okay? See, he's not backpedaling off. Step for place, step for place, step for place. Again, down here, nice job here. This receiver, with all this shaking, he's done nothing in the down. Stay square. Make him declare, do something, but we need to stay square. And this is a pretty nice job here. Kick slide, we've got him off the plane. But now, see, we, we this ball, you can't get the ball in because of the receiver. This is the receiver's ball. That's not a good throw. But now, we're outside release, high shoulder. We work in phase. You're ready to go play the ball. we got a chance there. Safety gets down, the other guy gets deep. But that's a nice job, a nice cutoff outside. All right. Nice job here. This is perfect. We're in the seam. He's reading his outside hip on the release. His hips are high. He knows he's thinking vertical out. Ball is snapped on the you know, 15, 16 yard line. All right, right there at about 10, 11 yards, he's playing in a low shoulder position. So to me, what I would tell that kid is you're utilizing your middle field safety. That's a nice job. Okay. So now we work back here. That's why on all inside releases, this hard stem inside work to a tailpipe position. So now when all these teams run these whips on us to here. All right. Like to work him again and press too with your hands up. So the first thing he does, drops his hands down. Now we can't disrupt timing. Not very good down here. But it does a nice job of ricocheting and coming back on the comeback curl there. Inside release. We stay locked. So what we would do, come by like right here. Yeah, we'll work through that. We, what we would want to do is tell the officials before the game that these guys cheat. Alright? And then number two. A lot of times on all this stuff, we want that we let's go let's go let's talk about punch. Okay. This will maybe clarify that. When 
when I say stab, that means we're going to take the guy on the line of scrimmage. All right? And as long as we're dealing with the rat in a middle field safety, so we're going to have a free player in a middle field safety, I'd go outside shoulder at six, and I'd go outside shoulder at eight. And what I call is lock and level. Lock means we're going to lock on our guys, and level means, hey, guys, get on different levels. Because if we're on the same level, that's when we're going to get hit. Okay? So if they run a snag concept, all right, let's say they run this guy out, so they hitch this guy, and they run seven. We're sticking this now. He's got leverage to come through, and we're able to cover that route. But we're able to play all these routes outside in, all right, because we have the leverage to because of our rat and our middle field safety. So go back to the pick route and two-man stack. If they get a close enough split, we're always going to take the guy on the line and then play the guy off off. So if he starts here, he's going to stay locked and he's going to battle through and back hip all inside releases. So he'll tailpipe everything inside. Okay? So we, we've got to get him through. Now, if we do play a jailbreak team, if this guy will get a flat release, we have played one behind two, where we would pass that, he'd come off, and he'd grab Paul right there on the line. If we play a huge jailbreak team, and we know we're going to have an issue and a problem with playing on the road, we're not going to get any calls, we know it's going to be. All right? So if he's trying to get in that, he feels that he'll grab him, and the slot guy will come over the top. Or any jailbreak side, we'll lean the middle field safety. You know, so we don't get a hit on the jailbreak and go. But we're going to stay locked. We go back to the base principle of taking that guy in man coverage, all right? That guy uh, of staying locked in the coverage. I don't like in man passing stuff off. We do that when we use our pattern match and we got split safety, we got two high safeties. So if we mess one up, we're able to grab one down the field. But when we're playing middle field and it's man to man, I like staying with our guys. Well, a lot depends on our corner. You know, we got, you know, because you're going to get a lot of shots. So if we feel real good about our corners, then we'll run some middle field. You know, if we feel like we've got to cover those guys up some, then we'll, we'll stay more split safety, whether that's corners, corner, quarter, half, uh, too deep. You know, we, to me, it's all about, you know, we're not going to take our scheme and throw it at our players. We're going to take our players and say, all right, what, what, what are the best things we can do? And I think that's what good coaches do. I think they evaluate who they are. Systems and they're multiple enough in their systems, they're able to do different things and take advantage of what their players can do. Do a good job of evaluating your guys. If we have really good corners, we'll play a bunch. That means we're probably going to be pressured and we're going to be gaining the box. It's philosophically, I believe, in being strong down the middle. And that means you got to do it with a middle field safety. But in order to do that, you also got to have some corners that you want. So they're going to be locked on the line. All right, now this, this is a good idea of, of, of man scoops. This guy right here, the slot receiver. But, but he's not backpedaling off the guy. He's sitting on all the intermediate routes, which you get a bunch of in the slot. And what I tell him, I say, hell, if you fall down and the guy runs the seam route, that's a middle field safety play. That ain't your play. I mean, we want you to be low hip on everything. All right, this is a decent job up top. Inside release, work to a tailpipe. See, to me, up top, you know, we're too high. On the inside release, we ought to be just, 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 just pushing across the formation. Four down here, we just open the door down here. If this, is, if this ball was going to this guy, we're in trouble. We've done nothing to disrupt timing. We've opened the door. The receiver's on top of us immediately. Gets down, go ahead and get in the middle of the field. All right, see, we're too soft in the slot. See, this guy's backpedaling too much. Too soft in the slot. And there's the rat. Now, this is an idea of a rat play. So he's going to cut the passing string. But again, we're utilizing the rat because of how we're leveraging the seams right there. That, to me, is, is understanding the defense. You're going to leverage the seam off there. Alright, 
this is an idea of lock and level. All right? We want to stay on our guys. So 24 there, it, 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 you know, we got to get down on the guy, get through the traffic, the lock and level. This is a nice job on the, on the chase concept by the safety right here of leveling off on this back. Good job by the back of pushing through. There's the rat cutting the receiver coming through. Nice job by eight feeling this thing right here. Great eye control across the board of what we're trying to do. All right, now this is an idea down here of, of a stab. So we're going to stab the guy on the ball, play the guy off the ball, but they're locked on their guy. We're not switching them off. Now, if we get into a situation, we have done this before. Let's say this guy's a great player, all right? So all they're doing is they're trying to get him in a position where he can get loose. And we may take the on-the-line on the guy and stab from outside in. In any inside route, he grabs him immediately so we don't give the guy space or you know, something like that. But that's strictly a game plan that we would do as an, an experienced group, all right? So you get an idea now, when I, when I say stab, let's go be aggressive on the line. We're in the scene, we're working for it here. Two on one funnel there. And this isn't bad up top, this is slug up. You know, this kid's in decent position. He tries to catch him with his off hand. He misses. He's a shorter corner versus a bigger wide out here. I mean, this is more, you know, issues of, you know, doing a better, uh, a better job. You see, this middle field safety, in my opinion, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is a three-by-one formation, and we got a mismatch issue up top. And the corner up top is a good player, all right? But he's going against a guy that's a good three or four inches tall. So you see he's leaning on this throw. This quarterback sees middle field, and he knows right now the ball's going to the X. So that's a good break. We like to have laid out and made one there. Now, the corner felt like he was out of phase, so he tried to play eyes and hands. But give me contact. Get the ball down, but let's go play again. So that's a good execution on their part, on our part. Don't think it's bad. It's a good throw and catch. It's going to happen some. The defensive guys understand that. Offensive guys don't. Right there. I see, that to me is a hell of a throw and catch. The guy thinks he's working out of phase. And generally what we'll tell our DBs when we're in the red zone is we don't work anything in phase. We play everything out of phase. Play everything no control down there because of the back shoulder ball. Because that's where they show up for. When we, when we work inside that 15, 18-yard line, we'll play everything out of phase. All right, so we're playing third receivers down there. And I think John's, I think he's, I think he's a good play. Yeah, they've got scholarships, too. So that's a good play on their part. All right, now we've got two seam leverages. She's out of the seam up top. We've got probably her should be head up to inside. But this is a good job, again, up top. You know, force the guy out this far, there's no room for the quarterback to throw the ball. We're probably too high in the slot on both slots, and the slot up top is so far out of the scene, he should be the head up to an inside shoulder leverage. Both throws inside. Both releases are outside. Both corners should be in a high shoulder positions. We're in cutoff here. We're in cut Well, we had, we had some one-on-one uh, -on -one video, which I think is I think it's really important to understand and play and disrupt the timing. If you're going to be a man team, you got to play one-on-one. -on -one. you got to go out and do it. Your receivers need to learn how to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. So you got to practice the things that you want to get good at within the scheme of what you what you do. But, uh, again, a, a, one other thing we want to hit on, on bump and run, is, is, is again, the ball inside is really working out with play step. So many kids get so nervous about getting to really work on that, on that just that with play step working an offhand jam, which I think some has been beneficial. But we really try to emphasize that the vital rules and the seam rules based on the middle field safety so the kids can understand where their help is, you know, and where they can get in trouble. Narrow down routes on inside stems and outside stems and press man so they understand what route combinations they can get from there. We're talking about move area outside. You know, where is the break off level outside? You know, where do you want to stay high short? talking in huge terms to our players about eye control. And where do we want your eyes on the receiver? You know, where, 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 you know, where, where do we want you on the hip, on the, in, the, in the head gear, in the bump, hands up? I mean, all of those things to me are so critical. We can 
get you in trouble on the line of scrimmage. Most of the time in bump and run, that's where you lose the bat on the line of scrimmage. When the guy gets on top of you quick and early in the down. Uh, more teams are doing double moves on uh, bump and run teams. It's a little unusual, so I think that's something we try to rep. But we take the things that, 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 that are the issues, and then also we relate that to the scene leverage stuff. And then I think the phase drill is something that we do every single day. It's learning when to look for the ball and when not to look for a ball will, will kill you. In the NFL, if they find a, a, a ball out there in the corner, the third and 18, they'll throw it up every time. And they they you know, will get pass interference, which is a spot foul, all right? Or the guy's going to misplay the ball and they got a chance for a big play. So that's a huge deal to be able to learn when to play it, when not to play it, 